Hi, everybody. My name is Andre Gurgens, and I prepared this course presentation together with Joshua Welch. This presentation will summarize and discuss a method that can be used to analyze certain aspects of EVs, uh, and it's named Beat Capture Flow Cytometry, uh, and it's also called uh, Beat Based EV Flow Cytometry. First, here's a brief overview. So bead-based flow cytometry is a method that can be used to assess the surface phenotype or protein surface, surface protein expression of EVs or other particles in a suspension that can be, for instance, cell culture supernatants, body fluid samples, or EV preparations. The data from this method can also provide quantitative information about the overall abundance of an EV surface protein within a sample. The principle behind this assay is a basic sandwich immunocapture assay, and the workflow can be divided um, into three basic steps. In the first step, antibody-coated capture beads bind to epitope-positive EVs when capture beads and EV-containing samples are co-incubated. Secondly, captured EVs are then following a washing step to remove unbound EVs detected by using fluorescently conjugated detection antibodies and by acquisition of the, the bead samples on a flow cytometer. At the end, fluorescent signals from detection antibodies are quantified and positive signals indicate that EVs in the sample analyzed carry both the epitope specific to the capture antibody and for the detection antibody. Let's have a closer look at this workflow here again. First, antibody-coated capture beads are incub incubated with EV-containing samples. Following a washing step to remove unbound EVs, uh, fluorescent detection antibodies are added. Uh, and if the sample contained enough EVs that are bound both uh, by the antibodies on the capture beads and the detection antibodies, flow cytometry, uh, flow cytometry analysis then provides a quantifiable shift of fluorescence between negative and uh, negative control and a positive sample. Taken together and put into context, that means that uh, bead-based flow cytometry derives bulk information about EV surface phenotype and relative abundance of protein. By uh, measuring bulk fluorescence derived from bound detection antibodies per bead with normally multiple EVs captured per capture bead. Uh, of note, this is assuming antibody specificity in general and the presence of particles or, or EVs of interest that are captured by the capture beads. Importantly, for instance, to increase data comparability, uh, data can and should be reported in calibrated units of absolute fluorescence, so-called MESF units, which stands for Molecules of Equivalent Soluble Fluorophores. Please refer to MOOC3 on flow cytometry for further details. Now let's talk a bit about interpretation of data obtained by using this method. This, this little cartoon shows a few examples of possible outcomes or scenarios when using this method. You see here again, uh, capture beads decorated with capture antibodies. For a true positive bead, EVs would specifically bind to capture beads and sufficient amounts of detection antibodies would bind to EVs captured on the bead. Um, a false negative bead could have a similar constellation, but only few of the EVs on the bead would specifically bound by in total too few detection antibodies per bead to be detected as positive. A true, uh, a true negative uh, event could either be a capture bead that didn't capture any EV specifically, like in this sample, or um, a capture bead that uh, specifically captured EVs through the capture antibodies, but the captured EVs were not positive for the fluorescent detection antibodies used and, and hence not binding them and staying fl non-fluorescent. Please note that uh, both cases of true negative would be indistinguishable from each other by this method. 
importantly, dependent on beads and regions or antibody use, there can be false uh, positive uh, beads or events if, say, if detection antibodies bind directly to the capture beads uh, unspecifically. So some considerations related to data derived from this method in this context. What is quantified is the bulk fluorescent signal above background signal. Importantly, while providing useful information about phenotype and protein abundance, this method is not a direct measure of sample heterogeneity, and in that sense can be biased towards specific phenotypes in certain cases. Specifically, an increase in specific SANC signal can practically result from either increased EV surface area, or higher protein abundance per EV, or higher concentration of EVs being positive for the respective phenotype in the sample. That also means that um, very different samples could theoretically, in, in certain cases, lead to similar results. Also, it's quite important to control for unspecific binding of detection antibodies to capture beads. That would lead to positive, uh, to false positive events as shown here. The essential control to include in each experiment to control for this is a control without EVs that is otherwise treated and incubated and stained and analyzed the same way as all samples. Here's some uh, considerations regarding the detection limits of this method. This histogram shows example data for, for control versus some scenarios of differently bright and differently variable positive signals. Generally, methods to compare controls to varying positive signals along with the scaling may affect the interpretation of results. Lower phenotype detection limit is constrained by instrument sensitivity and detection antibody protein abundance in the sample. And the upper phenotype detection limit is constrained by the binding capacity of the capture beads. Some practical information summarized. Uh, the time per measurement is in the time range of minutes. Um, the throughput, depending on your experimental design and your instrument and, and your sample type, uh, can be roughly 10 to 30 samples per hour. Um, the technology or this this method can be combined with auto samplers or, or plate readers if your if your flow cytometer is equipped with one. Um, the technology cannot identify single particles. Uh, the method is scalable to industrial or high throughput applications, and uh, the method is not applicable for in vivo or real time measurements. Also, since it's so essential, some more words about assay controls, even though some have been briefly mentioned before already. So the assay controls needed for each experiment to validate the results and, and ultimately also to have all the different options to normalize data in different ways are the following. First, uh, beads alone, meaning uh, unstained beads without any EVs to record truly the negative uh, bead signal or the bead autofluorescence. Optionally, uh, beads following incubation with EVs can be included as control, and those should uh, regularly look uh, absolutely identical to beads alone. But it could make sense in certain constellations, for example, when beads could potentially be fluorescently labeled in any way before incubation with the beads. An essential control uh, mentioned before would be beads plus detection antibodies without EVs. Um, and this control would show any unspecific binding of detection antibodies to capture beads directly, which, which would lead uh, to false positive events. And last but not least, uh, using isotype control antibodies as detection antibodies is a useful control to monitor for any potential unspecific binding of detection antibodies to, to EVs or the beads. Some words about uh, data reporting as follows. What uh, minimally should be reported is um, the detailed protocol 
uh, including all regions, uh, all plastic were used, all incubation times, volumes, dilution steps, and so on. Um, also the instrument specification and, and all data acquisition settings. Uh, as mentioned before, all the assay controls and also ideally the raw data um, or, and dot plots uh, from those measurements. Then uh, the detection antibody bulk fluorescence intensity in standard units uh, relative to controls, which is the main uh, like result component of this. And then, of course, if a calibration has been included, the calibration information, how it has been uh, exactly performed. And very importantly, um, also the, the algorithm used to compare samples to control, meaning the, the way uh, any raw data is processed, normalized, uh, treated to come to the final data presentation that you uh, report. How data should not be reported um, uh, as relative concentrations in percent of flow cytometry data, meaning that it's not informative what percentage of the beads can be gated positive. Instead, as mentioned, report the detection antibody fluorescence intensity relative to controls. Here's a summary of the main recommendations uh, of what to do. Um, so one should uh, calibrate data to make longitudinal comparisons and also cross-platform comparisons possible. Um, one should uh, capture particles using low abundance markers and detect using high abundance markers, ideally. That's not always known um, in advance, of course. Uh, but it's uh, highly recommended since the signal measured is derived from the detection antibodies. And thus, uh, if done this way, signals will generally be higher. Um, what you also should do is titrate antibodies and input material. Um, and of course, include essential controls uh, as discussed before. Um, important, Most importantly, beads plus uh, buffer, so beads alone, and beads plus buffer plus detection antibodies without having uh, any EVs uh, in that sample. So here's an example data set uh, showing a multiplex version of bead-based EV flow cytometry. Uh, in the top row, you see a gating example um, on a single beads first and then an array of 39 different multiplexed antibody-coated capture beads that are barcoded in this commercially available assay. Uh, you can see the capture bead specificities um, uh, outlined here. Um, and this means that when using this multiplexed assay version, we obtain a total of 39 different data points from uh, different capture bead specificities at the same time, which includes uh, two internal isotype controls. Uh, and ultimately, the data can then be normalized and visualized in different ways um, and provides lots of information or data from the same amount of EV input material as from a single non-multiplex version of this speed capture flow cytometry method. The example heat map uh, shows, um, uh, he shown here um, is uh, basically a comparison of the surface protein composition for seven different cell lines using, using this multiplex bead-based uh, EV flow cytometry assay. Here's some recommendations for further reading about both the single and the multiplexed versions of bead capture or, or bead-based EV flow cytometry. Uh, 